गुड इवनिंग ऑल ऑफ यू गुड इवनिंग मैम वी कैन सी फोर स्टूडेंट्स सो चिल्ड्रन कैन यू आस्क योर क्लासमेट्स टू जॉइन Should we start, ma'am? Supporting leaders should post the message. They should have done it in the morning. It's not joining. I can't follow it. Audio, audio is not working properly. I said the class coordinator should have ensured that the students join. Actually, the notice was sent in the class WhatsApp groups. So the WhatsApp groups are for the class. So the class coordinators here, please let us know why you have not informed the students to join, or at least put the message up on the notice board to join. Have you reminded the students? Wait, Karo. Anji. The students have started joining. They are coming. Few of them have joined. Few of the March third semester are doing their dissertation with us. So to them, I have said they can be excused, but the others yes. should.
Jyoti, how many students have joined now? Jyoti, can you hear me? Sujay, you are on mute. Yeah, Jyoti doesn't have a, um, I think, uh, my so how many students are there approximately uh, i think around 20 20 25 okay. so we can commence hmm. I think we can start, Sujay. Okay. Uh, good evening, all of you. I think I'm audible. Yes, sir. You are audible. Okay. Uh, so, uh, we have assembled over here to observe the national education day now uh, i will be asking the students uh, whoever are uh, present over here are you aware of this day that uh, the national education day is observed on uh, 11th of november any one of you are aware of that from the students Okay, just to give an introduction, the uh, National Education Day, it is observed every year on 11th of November. Uh, and it started uh, from the year 2008 to uh, on the birth day of uh, Maulana Abul Kalam Azad. So on his birthday, uh, this 11th of November, every year in our country, it is observed as the National Education Day. Now, uh, how many of you are familiar with the name of Maulana Abul Kalam Azad? Anyone? Yes, any one of you? Okay. So, um, Maulana Abul Kalam Azad, he was the first education minister of independent India. So after we got our independence in the year 1947, when the new ministry was formed, education minister in the post of education minister, Muhammad, uh, Maulana Abul Kalam Azad, he was made the education minister and he served in this post till 1958. So he was there for almost 10 years as the education minister. Now from 2008 onwards, this day, that is his birthday, is being observed in our country as the National Education Day. Now you must be knowing that uh, we always celebrate some day of the year for certain purposes. Like we observe the, maybe all other than the Independence Day, Republic Day and all these things, we also celebrate like um, the sports day, the National Sports Day, National uh, Women's Day, National Children's Day. So like this, we have various days which are being celebrated. And 11th of November 
is celebrated as the National Education Day. Now, this ed education, as you can understand, is a very important aspect for the development of human behavior, human mind, human uh, all aspects of our life is complete when we have we get proper education. So education in various forms, we have seen that it can be a person can be educated. He can be educated in the formal way, like going to the school, college, university, like that. Education can be from the family, from the culture, from the um, society, from everywhere. We have a lot of things to learn. And whenever we learn, whenever we gather knowledge, we get educated in some way or the other. So education is a very important thing, which each and every individual needs to be in that environment that without education, you cannot say a human life will blossom in that way. So this National Education Day, as I just mentioned, that it is celebrated and the birthday of Maulana Abul Kalam Azad. Now, I mentioned that he was the first education minister of independent India. In addition to that, he had a lot of other um, aspects in his uh, life or in his character. First of all, he was a journalist. He was uh, associated with the freedom movement, with the independence movement. He was a social activist at that time. He was a politician and definitely he was an educationist. Now, Mama, uh, Maulana Abul Kalam Azad, he had a very, very different type of life, which we can, when we talk about these type of politics, the people who are in politics or who are into ministry, so we find that they have some sort of way of the way they have been brought up, the way they have been educated, and finally they come to politics, and then from there they get a minister, become maybe a leader, then a minister or something like that. But Abul Kalam, he his he was born of a parent. His mother was from Arab origin, and his father he was a Bengali Muslim. So he was brought up in that environment where, where there was a cross-cultural exchange. In his childhood, actually, he was born in Mecca. And in his child, he spent his childhood over there. His uh, father then moved back to India. Uh, he came to Calcutta over there. And as we can understand that, uh, or we might have a feeling that since he was an education minister, he had a very qualifications but to be surprised it was not so he was actually home taught he did, he was homeschooled rather so whatever education he received in his childhood and later on in his life everything was given by his parents by his surrounding by his society and later on from his own uh, self study so he was taught or he was educated in the normal uh, Islamic culture, whatever are there, because he had a very strong Islamic background. So he was taught in those things. Other than since he was having a cross-cultural um, background of his parents, so he had actually learned a lot of languages, which included Hindi, Bengali, uh, Persian, and other languages also. And later on also, he learned various other languages. So we find that he had a very different childhood. And later on, he started, uh, he, he learned the language of English. And then also, then he started learning about law, he started learning about other subjects, about economics, about history. And he became self, self educated. So he had a strong educational background, not in the conventional way, but rather in a very unconventional way, he was educated. Now, he was inspired by Gandhiji's uh, ideologies. And as a result, what he joined the Indian National Congress uh, when the freedom independence movement or the freedom fight was going on in our country. So that time, what happened, he had joined that uh, Indian Congress. And later on, he was made the president of the Congress party. And he was the youngest of uh, the Indian National Congress uh, member to become the president of Indian National Congress at just an early age of 35 years only. So he was into direct politics. He was into various movements, 
inspired by Gandhiji's uh, ideologies. And as a result, he was uh, into this uh, freedom movement. And later on, when we got our independence, he got a very strong portfolio of becoming the education minister. So he was the first education minister of independent India. Now, uh, becoming after becoming the education minister, he had actually done a lot for the education of our country. So uh, we find that in he became he had started all these organizations or during his tenure. He had a tenure of ten years, as I told you. So during this entire tenure, he had initiated a lot of organizations related to education, which includes like AICT which includes like a UGC, even the IIT Kharagpur uh, or the IIT move, the IIT system of education, all those things were initiated by uh, this person. So you can understand that becoming a education minister, he was uh, not only uh, doing whatever is related to his ministerial work, but otherwise he had changed entirely the education system of our country. So he wanted to have in the, the uh, Indian education system in a very different way, which will be having many fold development from starting from the early uh, stage of education till the highest level. So you, as I told you that he had initiated the IITs, the IISPs, the School of Planning and Architecture, uh, the UGC, all these were under his guidance and under his ideas that these uh, organizations were developed and still we see that they are flourishing and they are working uh, for the development of our. Also, he was all, uh, interested in various cultural and literary activities. And as a result, we find that he also uh, initiated or he was the he, uh, he was the brain behind the development of organizations like the Sangeet Natak Academy, the Lalit Kala Academy, the Saiti Academy, all these things were under his guidance and under his brainchild. So even the Indian Council for Cultural Relations, all those things were his ideas. So you can understand that anything related to education, anything related to um, cultural and literary activities, which we, which we cherish nowadays, all those were part of his ideas. And during his tenure, he had tried his best to make them uh, very strong so that our education, literary, and cultural um, environment in the country, that becomes, or that flourishes in a very uh, important, and India becomes a hub of all these educational activities. Now, um, uh, this day being his in the birthday, it has been nominated as the National Education Day. Now, uh, because of his, of his contribution for this edu education, uh, for this uh, development of national education policies and all, uh, he was uh, posthumously awarded Bharat Ratna, India's highest civilian award in the year 1992. Because he passed away in 1958, so in 1992, posthumously he was awarded this Bharat Ratna. Now, uh, because of his ideas, because of his um, enthusiasm, and because he had tried to develop India and India's uh, education system, uh, he uh, India's commitment to establish uh, as a global hub of education and to ensure the high quality of education. Uh, we find that study in India, stay in India, and internationalization of education, all these have later on been developed. Also, you know that uh, the national education policy, which we are now talking uh, at large nowadays, because a new educational policy, national educational policy is supposed to be, uh, the process has already started and it will be initiated in few years, but it was there uh, initiated uh, many years back, when all these systems which we are now talking about country, we have a very uh, a, a uniform system of education, whether it is at the school level or it is at the college level or it is at the university level. So you must have heard about various schemes which were floated by the government 
लाइक द सर्व शिक्षा अभियान द मिड डे मील स्कीम द नवोदय विद्यालय सिस्टम ऑफ एजुकेशन द केंद्रीय विद्यालय Uh, all these things these were a outcome of the national education policy which was initiated and materialized in the year 1986 so for, from all from the long time back you can understand that this national education policy was in place and all these schemes were initiated and implemented throughout the country so for the school education as you can understand that the, this sarv shiksha abhiyan this was a system where Uh, education will be given to the children and it will be tried to be um, uh, dissipated in such a way that each and every child of our country they get education in a proper system so there will be the curriculum we talk about the various curriculum at the school level like the cbs system or the icc system or we have the state boards also so all these boards all these uh, um, education systems they follow a curriculum starting from the very primary level till the secondary level so these are carried out and then we have seen that the navodaya vidyalayas or the kendriya vidyalayas they were established in each and every district of our country you can understand every district we have the navodaya vidyalaya kendriya vidyalaya we have in each and every state uh, each and every um, uh, district headquarter at least so we find that these were the various organizations these are the various institutions which were initiated as a as a result of this national education policy which was started in 1986 so from that time onwards these have been carried forward so we find that the government have always tried to educate the children of our country and as a result of this we find that the rte the right to education this is a system this is a section which was incorporated in the constitution of india so right to education is also a fundamental right so this was later on added in the year 2009 when uh, we find that this right to education was implemented and we find that this was also uh, being in uh, uh, it is a very important uh, system which is making people aware that each and every child of our country has the right to get educated so uh, if you are aware of the various fundamental rights of our country similarly you must be knowing that the right to education act is also a fundamental right to each and every citizen of our country so this rt act it was um, introduced in the year 2009 uh in the parliament of india and it describes the importance of free and compulsory education for the children between the age group of 6 to 14 that means from the primary level till at least the class 8 the children should have free and compulsory education so it is the responsibility of each and every individual not only the government not only the social organizations but it is the, it, it is the um, responsibility for each and every individual of our country whoever are educated whoever uh, are uh, the flag bearers of certain um, organizations or anywhere wherever you are even if you are looking you are a part of the society it is your responsibility to see that no child of our country uh, remains uneducated so this is a compulsory and free education system each and every children should be getting you must be knowing that in our country all these government run schools whether it is a kendriya vidyalaya or it is a navodaya vidyalaya or it is a state government run uh, school we find that they have a very nominal fees and in most cases there is no tuition fee uh, applied for the education because that comes under the right to education so the governments and the social organizations they have this moral responsibility to to educate the child uh, between the age group of 6 to 14 so free education should be given and compulsory education this should be given now you must be knowing that in our country parallelly we have a uh, private education system also like we have the private schools we have the private colleges we have the private universities we have the private engineering and uh, um, medical 
uh, colleges, etc. All these things are there. Over there, you, as you are aware, that all these private schools, private colleges, they have uh, tuition fees and other fees like computer charges, development charges, all these things are already there. And these are always at a higher level. But because of this Right to Education Act, which was introduced in 2009, it is mandatory for all these private institutions, whether it is at the school level or at, mostly in the school level, but even in the college level also, that at least 25% of the children who are at the school, uh, at that age group of 6 to 14, they have to be admitted in this in these private schools also because if the parents want they can put their they can bring their children for admission to these private schools also and they will not be charged for being educated over there they will not be asking for any tuition fee or any other fees in these schools okay so 25 percent of the total intake of these schools these private schools have to be from the society who are uh, maybe at the uh, lower level of the economics who are uh, maybe uh, below the poverty line and all. So if they wish to bring their children and make them educated in these private schools, no school can deny the uh, admission of these children. So it is a compulsory education, okay? So they cannot deny. Now, there is also another thing that the benchmark mandate. Now, according to this right to education, there cannot be any school which will not have the proper infrastructure. So a school cannot be done without properly qualified teachers, without the proper infrastructure in the form of blackboards or whiteboards. Or nowadays, it is also mandatory for all schools to have IT education. So education in the computer languages, usages of these computer systems for all the children from a very basic level. That means at a very early class of say, maybe I think third or fourth class, they start learning the computer languages and the usages of the computers in various fields. So these are all mandatory. Similarly, like proper classrooms, like drinking water facilities, toilet facilities, then there should be a proper working hour, there should be proper playing hours, there should be proper timing for the uh, lunch break, for the tiffin hours, all these things have to be mandatorily there. So these are the various benchmarks which each and every school has to follow. It is a mandate. So not only for the government schools, but it is also for the private schools that these everything has to be maintained. And anyone can get admission over there. In fact, as I, as I mentioned, that compulsory education. So these have certain provisions also for the special case. Like if you are not having a proper, means in many schools they deny. Like um, you may be knowing in the private schools that whenever a child is taken for admission, they have a system of um, interviewing the child, interviewing their parents, they are understanding the educational or maybe the economic background of the parents. So these cannot be there. It is actually zero tolerance against discrimination and harassment. So according to this right to education, no child can be discriminated. No child can be harassed. And as a result, you must be knowing that there cannot be any physical punishment or mental harassment for any child allowed in the um, in these uh, schools. So whether it's a government school or a private school. So all these are under the provision of the right to education. So under this right to education, we see that the child is getting a compulsory and free education. There is no questioning that you cannot ask a child that what is his background, what is his parents' background, what the economic background of the child, etc., etc. It cannot be questioned. A child cannot be interviewed to know whatever basic knowledge he has before he is admitted in the school. Because you may be knowing that in many schools, they used to act till maybe four or five years back also. The elite schools, which we say the elite schools of a city or a town, they used to always screen. They used to take the cream of the uh, society and admit them for their own benefit. But that is not allowed. And as a result, nowadays, you must be seeing that all the schools are having a lottery system. So it is the admission is only through the draw of lots. So all these are as a result of this right to education. So everyone has this right and everyone is actually having this um, right to have 
free access to this education. So as I told you that the government system definitely have a free education system. Uh, there is usually no um, tuition fees or any other fees are charged. But in the private schools also, though they have anyone who is able to pay, the parents are able to pay, they can pay the fee, but at least 25% of the total intake, total seats, they go for the free seats. Free seats means you have to admit the children who, whose parents do not have the capacity of paying those FT amount, but you have to admit them and you cannot discriminate them. You have to educate them in these ways. So what we understand from this right to education, and that's why in this National Education Day, we all have to be aware that whatever we are seeing around us, like all, all of us who, who are present in this platform today, we are all privileged. We have got the education from the renowned schools or maybe from organizing, from institutes. And still we are in the very premier institute. We are all privileged to have this. But there are so many children whom we see they are underprivileged. They are not getting this opportunity to get educated. So all of us should take this as a oath that we should not let any child of our country go uneducated. So whenever we see any, ch any child or we find that or we ask them, we should be having this initiative to go and ask them that whether they are getting their basic education in the schools or not. If they are not getting, if they are, if we find, if any one of us find that they, they, the children or their parents are not aware of this right to education, we should definitely make them aware and tell them the way by which they can approach any school, whether it's a government school, whether it's an Avodaya Vidyalaya, whether it is a Kendriya Vidyalaya, or it is a private organization, a private school, that they have this right to go and take admission in the school and take the education from preliminary level, maybe from class uh, first class till the uh, eighth class, at least they should have. Because you must be knowing that in our, uh, because of the child labor law in our country, till the age of 14 years, no one can be appointed for working because that comes under child labor. So no children who is below the age of 14 should be engaged in any sort of labor. So they, what, then in that case, what are they going to do? So their only uh, engagement should be in the education. So they should be engaged, they should be admitted in various schools and they should get the basic education. If they want to continue, if they are able to continue, definitely they will go up to the um, uh, matriculation level. They should go for the higher, uh, higher secondary level. They should go join the college, university, and get themselves educated till whatever um, level they want to attain. But at least the basic education should be given to them. As a result of this uh, right to education, the, sec the section which have been added in our constitution, we have seen that there has been an increase of around 65 to 66% in the girl-child enrollment of the, student, of the students in the schools. You must be knowing that this has been a very common notion among most of these areas, especially in the rural areas, in the areas where we have the orthodox communities, there the, the girl child is not given importance. Even if the boys are sent for the basic education, girls were never given so importance that they should also be educated equally like the boys. But because of this right to education, the parents have also become quite aware and they are now eager to educate their child, girl child also. And in the schools, we are finding that there has been an increase in the uh, in enrollment of this girl child. So we see that it has grown up to 66% increase in this. So more and more children are now shifting towards the admitted admission in the government schools also. You must be knowing uh, if you have read and followed the news articles and the newspapers that during this lockdown, there had been a lot of problems in this education system, especially in the school education. Because we see, we know that mostly in cities like Chandigarh or maybe any such big cities, we have seen that most of the 
parents who are able to afford they are putting their children in the private schools because they feel that uh, they are the education system they are the upbringing or the manners or the behavioral system which will be developed in the children will be different will be much better though there is no such um, hard and fast system or rule which we can understand but we have seen that because of this lockdown because of this covid pandemic uh, many parents have been in a very difficult financial situation and as a result many children have shifted from these private schools to the government schools so the enrollment in the government schools during this pandemic have also increased now um, each and every um, system of education whether it, especially in the lower level in the school level there has been a lot of problem because of this lockdown because we were initially relying only on the online system online system in the school level at the basic level was very difficult for most of the parents who are who do not even have a smartphone so how are they going to uh, make their child study through those so there has been a lag in between uh, during these various uh, months um, for last one one year i can say that many of these even we see that the uh, our helps were coming to our their children are also not going because they cannot afford to have laptop definitely it does not come into question but even a smart phone so how are they going to follow the education or follow the um, teaching which is being which is happening in their schools so there has been a, a lag in their education system but now things have been opening up the physical classes have started so the government has opened up for the physical interaction and physical school uh, physical education system in the schools and colleges so we see that these things have started now uh, in, under this uh, um, right to education we have also seen that there is something called the mid day meal scheme so may, many of you may be aware of this mid day meal mid day meal means this is to attract the children from the lower economic society uh, status that uh, if they come to school they will be provided with one meal that means the mid day meal or the lunch so they will get lunch so this was also a scheme which was floated because of this national educational policy as i told you it was just initiated in 1986 so this mid day meal scheme is there in all the government schools and each and every child who is admitted in this school they get a meal one time full meal is given free of cost so that is also another way of attracting these children otherwise these children were always in uh, involved in various types of uh, child labor so they were working in the fields they were you know, working as domestic helps they were working in the maybe in the chai shop or all these areas so it was not to be um, uh, encouraged and as a result they were uh, provided with this meal so that parents were also knowing that if my child is going to the school at least one time meal is um, assured for them and as a result they started sending their children to the school so they were also getting educated they were getting the meal so these type of things were introduced by the national education and policy and for all these things this national education day is so significant that we should always remember that whatever our government and whatever all these organizations like um, ugc like the school boards and all these things they are continuously researching and they are experimenting on various types of development in doing this in uh, making our education system flourish so that india becomes the hub of education in people from people from various parts of the world they look into the Uh, education system which is which is there prevailing in our country also you must be knowing that the new education national education policy is being uh, uh, already floated and as a result of that we find that whatever system was being followed in our country there has been a, some changes so now the education system is not so um uh, conventional as we were thinking so there can be a choice based education system also so we see that the new education policy which is being proposed and there are a lot of uh, research and lot lot of uh, you must have attended webinars and other seminars and workshops where this is being uh, been 
discussed a lot. So not only at the school level, at the college level also, we find that the system is tried to be changed. So what is this new education policy? Uh, what is uh, what are they going to change? So previously we were we were having a system in the school education as ten plus two plus three. So 10 means from class first class till the 10th class, then 11th and 12th is class two, and then we have uh, degree level uh, education, which is three. Uh, in a professional course, it is four. So it was 10 plus two plus three in most cases, but it was 10 plus two plus four in the uh, engineering or other professional courses for architecture, as you know, it is 10 plus five. Now they are saying that let us change it into a different way. So there will be the system will be now five plus three plus three plus four. So five, what is five? The first five years of the school education will be the foundational education, where they will be learning all the basics, so all the subjects which we study, you know, which we have studied or you have studied till now. All those subjects will be there. That means English, their mother language, their mother all whatever vernacular language is there. Um, uh, Hindi, maths, uh, social studies, hygiene, um, sports, all these things will be there. So all fundamental or foundational education, which is required for the overall development of a child, all will be there and they will be taught in the first five years of this um, entire uh, course. Next three years will be of preparatory. That means where there will be, if a child is found that he is not so good in um, uh, some subject, like he doesn't want to continue with English or he doesn't want to continue with maths. In that case, he has the option of leaving that subject and there will be few subjects which is of his or her choice or he finds more comfortable. So he will get the basic education till, uh, till the first five years. Then he can cho choose the subjects. The next three years will be further more. That means what it will be, like we do, uh, we take up uh, in um, 11, 12, we used to take medical, non-medical, or maybe commerce or humanities. So that will start from class 9th onwards. So 9th, 10th, and 11th, these three years will be this specific stream. So a child can take up uh, humanities, take up commerce, or take up um, medical or non-medical. So till class 11. So this will be the next level which is called the, uh, the uh, level before you go to college. So the school education will also have this type of choice based, which we were having only in 11th and 12th. So a child do not need to continue with maths, with science, with English. So all those subjects till the class 10th board exam. So he can stop at a, some preliminary level, then he can make his choice and further he can be more assured about which subjects he or she is going to pursue and from there he can take up the college education now this college education also whatever is there in the syllabus so that is also choice based so there can be combinations like a, a student can take up architecture and at the same time he can learn music a, the a child a, a student who is interested in literature can study or pursue literature or um, specialization in literature or comparative literature maybe english literature whatever it is and simultaneously he can he or she can have a subject like a maths like he is not good or he is not interested in science but he is interested in maths so along with his literature he can take up maths so like that there can be various options like a, a person who is interested in engineering is pursuing engineering, but he or she has also has an option of studying psychology or having uh, 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 a choice of philosophy or maybe spiritual studies. So all these things, so there can be a lot of these combinations. So it is very flexible. It's going to be very flexible where we will be fine. We, we will get to know about this more in detail when it will be implemented in the new national education policy. So over there, now it is becoming more uniform. Everyone has this combination, have this option of studying any subject. So in uh, other some uh, European countries, we, we know that this type of thing has already been in place. So in our country also, within a few years, this will be introduced and you will be coming to know about this type of study.
so uh, no, there will be a single agency like the national testing agency like the now it is the joint entrance examination is conducted by the national testing agency so they will be conducting the common college entrance examination so uh, whatever is your interest you can appear for that that entrance exam and uh, it will be uniform for all colleges uh, of uh, offering you the courses so it will be uniform and as a result of that what will happen you can take a course of your choice you can get admitted to any college anywhere in the country through that examination so that is where it will be like it will be introduced also as i just mentioned the college education will be now four years because your school education ends at uh, equivalent to class 11th so after 11th uh, we were doing up to class 12th and after that it was uh, three years of degree and not the general uh, normal ba bsc bcom degrees not the professional courses so those were three years now it will be four years at par with the engineering degrees or uh, maybe other degrees so college education will now be four years of bachelor education then there will be no affiliation you know when for the next 15 years the colleges will be given autonomy to give degrees affiliation with the universities and all so there will be only one central university who will be conducting the entire courses they will be regulating the courses and the colleges if they have the if they follow the mandate if they have the proper qualified you know, staff to impart the education they can continue with the courses they have the autonomy to give the degrees to the children who have been admitted over there so it will be like deemed university status to the colleges only there will be a cap on the type of fees which will be charged from the children so uh, you might have uh, know of certain colleges who charge exorbitant tuition fees for any sort of education whether it is engineering architecture um, medical maybe law and all these things but according to this national new national education and policy you will find that there is a cap no institution no college can go beyond that you cannot overcharge them you cannot take any capitation fee from anywhere you may be knowing that at one point of time this was a very common practice at least when we were students i we used to hear this terminology called the capitation fee like some universities not universities some colleges they used to admit students by taking a hefty amount even if you were not having the requisite aptitude or the required marks for taking admission to that course so these type of things were happening but because of this new national education policy there will be a cap and no private institution whether it is a school or it is a institution of higher education will be able to charge uh, these hefty amounts also we are going to go global that means we will be inviting um, uh, students from other countries to come it is happening you know that in punjab university this is very, and in most most of the universities of our country and especially i'm giving the example because we know that in all the courses of punjab university there are some seats which are reserved for foreign nationals so they can come over so this will be more encouraged because of this national education and policy that students from other countries they can come and global universities who are very highly uh, rated globally so they will also be invited to come and set up a study center in our country and even our institutions will be been encouraged to um, bring children or to bring students to uh, follow the courses which are offered over here so this will be the various types of um, changes which are going to come in our national education policy so uh, on this very significant day of the national education day which is 11th of november uh, we are now observing today so as a message i would like to uh, convey to all of you that please be aware that what is our right each and every citizen of our country if and each and every child of our country has the right to get free and compulsory education so as responsible citizen of india each and every one should encourage 
each and every child from any family, wherever we see that they are not getting proper education or they are not being encouraged to get educated, that they should go and get admitted in any school, whether it is a government school or it is a private school, because private schools also have this provision. And uh, definitely uh, you may question that why a private school will admit a child without taking a tuition fee. So they are reimbursed by the government because government is giving this incentive to the private schools that you admit the children who are not able, whose parents are not able to pay, admit them, give them proper education and for their tuition fee, we will be paying from our side. So in a government school, there is no fees charge. In a private school also, there are seats for these underprivileged children. So each one of us should take this as one of our moral duties from now onwards, wherever we see any child is not getting proper education, he or she should be encouraged and we should take the initiative to take them and get them admitted in a school so that at least they get the basic education till class eight, at least till the age of 14, they are not involved into child labor, they are not involved into any sort of antisocial activities or any sort of uh, things which is not meant for a child of that age group. Their only uh, focus should be on education should be on it, their overall development. So let us consider this and let us remember that on this on this National Education Day, which is the birthday of our first education minister, Maulana Abul Kalam Azad, that we take this as our moral responsibility. Thank you so much for your patience hearing. Um, it was a very uh, a quick thought which was uh, initiated. Uh, by our principal ma'am that we should observe this day. Uh, it was uh, a direction from the central government. So in a just a day's notice, and for you, it was just a hour's notice that we had thought of having this uh, discussion today. So thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you, Sujay, Professor Sen Gupta. This was a very insightful and uh, engaging uh, presentation definitely put together at a very short time but really the knowledge that you have given us in the last uh, 50 minutes have been very very insightful and I think uh, you have uh, really laid good stress on the various aspects and rights to education which I think every child every human being and every citizen of this country should be aware of and uh, we should carry it forward like a torch with us and also try and spread the awareness for the right to education. And uh, here I'm very happy to share with uh, the uh, students here and the faculty here that uh, our worthy Secretary Technical Education has uh, very graciously awarded a project to the college wherein we will be along with our students and faculty looking at initiatives that we can do during the uh, 75 years of independence this year on creation of landscape spaces within pre-nursery schools, which is the initiative of the government in the NEP 2020. So CCA will again do some more capacity building and especially because we design nursery schools, they are part of our academic projects. So the design teams will be set up and we hope to be doing in 140 government schools of the city, this sort of an initiative. So wishing everybody um, very well and uh, a great success in their educational pursuits and also the faculty to continue their efforts in imparting quality education. I'm very happy that uh, we have got together today to celebrate and commemorate the uh, uh, the contribution of the first education minister, as uh, Professor Sujasen Gupta has mentioned to us, and we hope to carry forward this legacy. Thank you so much. Good evening. Good evening.